Welcome to Footprints in American History. Today, we're gonna to talk about the biggest badass of them all. <laughs> Had to be pretty blunt with this title. However, when you learn this story, you're gonna see why. When I read this story the other day, my jaw dropped. This guy deserves the title. We have to cue the George Thorogood music, bad to the bone, because this guy was bad to the bone. Okay. The person we're going to talk about today is Master Sergeant Roy P. Benavidez. Now, Roy was born, he actually, his first name was technically Raul. He was a Mexican-American. He grew up in South Texas, probably about an hour from Houston. Um, he had some disadvantages in his life. Now, his parents died when he was young. Uh, when he got older, he ended up running away from home. He had dropped out of school, ran away from home. Uh, he ended up having a stepfather in there. They had always told him, however, this adopted father kept telling him, you need an education. You're never going to succeed without an education. He just drummed that into his head over and over and over. So he never forgot that, even though he had dropped out of school. He ended up joining the Texas National Guard. From there, he went to the U.S. Army and that was where he learned about where he could get extra pay doing the airborne to jump out of planes. Now, he did do that. So at Fort Benning, one of the things he learned quickly was that if you make a mistake, you're going to do push-ups. And he said he did a lot of push-ups, a lot of push-ups. He said he helped push Georgia into South Carolina. So he was assigned to the 82nd Airborne at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And he qualified to do Special Forces, which we know, know as the Green Berets. Now, in 1965, he was sent as an advisor to Vietnam, and he stepped on a mine. Now, from this, he was devastating. He ended up being paralyzed from the waist down. Now, here's where it starts showing how the grit this man had. He was told he was never going to walk again after being paralyzed from the waist down. Uh, he even had trouble, I mean, just the amount of trouble he went through, he was in pain. So he decided on his own he was not going to listen to this stuff about never being able to walk again. So every chance he got, he would try to walk again on his own. He'd move toes, he'd try to move his feet, he'd anything he could to learn to walk again. Now the nurses didn't like this. They had been told he was never going to walk again, and they wanted to enforce that. If he tried to get up or walk or anything like that, they'd run into the room and give him a big chewing out. But it didn't stop him. He kept wanting to walk. So he wanted to go back to Vietnam. He had seen people coming back with missing limbs. He hated seeing how the media portrayed the war. He hated just the way the public perception of this war was. He knew people were dying over there. They were coming back without limbs. Some of them were dying. So he did not like this. He wanted to get back to his buddies and to the people that were serving in Vietnam. And he was going to do whatever it took. Now, nine months later, after all this happened, he's in the hospital. The doctor walks into his room with his discharge papers. And he, he tells him, you're never going to walk again, so we're going to give you a discharge. He's like, no, I'm going to walk again. So the doctor is like, yeah, right. So he literally surprises the doctor and he stands up in front of the doctor. And he's like, I'm going to walk again. Well, the doctor tells him, he said, if you walk out of this room, I will tear these papers up. Miraculously, he walked out of there with a limp. Now, it gets better from this, okay? He walked out of that room with a limp, so he forces the doctor to tear the paper up. He ends up going back to Fort Bragg. He starts doing some therapy. Now, remember, he was told he would never walk again, that he was paralyzed. He started running five to 10 miles a day. Now, I, I'm a former runner. I used to run easily three to five miles a night. He was running five to 10 miles a day. On top of that, every day he was doing 50 to 100 push-ups to recover. He wanted to make sure that he was gonna do it. He even parachuted three times in one day. This is from what he said in one of his own speeches that he gave in New Orleans. So in April of 1968, he went back to Vietnam. Now, this is where I want to read from a Quora magazine article. Uh, Quora, actually, Quora.com, they answer a lot of questions. Somebody had asked about this. So I'm going to explain a little bit about what happened. Now, 
because he had landed on a landmine, people had thought that he was never going to do it. So he goes back to Vietnam. And May 2nd, 1968, he goes back and there's an operation to save some wounded soldiers. He wants to get them. But they're wounded, so they can't move to the helicopter pickup area, so he's got to get out there to it to, to help rescue him himself. He jumped from this helicopter. Mind you, he only had a knife on him, okay? There's fire going on around there. He jumps between 30 and 50 feet out of the helicopter to get to his wounded soldiers. They have classified information, so he has to make sure that not only do the people get back, but he wants to make sure that also this information gets back, the classified information they had on him. Plus, on top of that, he also not only was dealing with that, he also ended up bringing back three enemy soldiers so that if they had any classified information, he was getting it to the United States Army no matter what. So I'm going to go from here and read a little bit of what he said. Now, he jumped from the helicopter while he was running from his comrades. He was wounded on his right knee, or excuse me, right leg, face, and head. When he reached the team, he was already severely wounded by small arms fire in the abdomen and grenade fragments in his back. Later, the aircraft pilot was fatally, fatally wounded and the helicopter crashed. This is the rescue helicopter that he just jumped from. The person who wrote this said, went on to say, although he was critically wounded, Benavidez secured the classified documents and made his way back to the ruins of the helicopter where he aided the wounded out of the, wounded out of the aircraft and gathered shock survivors into a defensive formation. Under heavy fire, he moved around the squad and distributed water and ammunition to the men. He's already got how many wounds? So he goes on to say, then he called for airstrikes and another rescue attempt. He was shot in the thigh a couple more times. While he was going toward the second rescue helicopter, he was stabbed by an enemy. He's already got multiple wounds. He's stabbed by an enemy, enemy and he killed that guy in hand-to-hand -hand combat despite his own wounds. When they finally made it back to the base, it says, he was pronounced dead and put into a body bag. As they were zipping up the body bag, and he talked about this in his speech, as they were zipping it up, he spat into the doctor's face. Now what had happened was, they thought he was dead, but somebody recognized there was blood all over his face, his eyelids were closed because of this. Well, one of those comrades recognized, oh my gosh, this is Roy P. Benitez. We need to make sure that Benavides is, is rescued. And he shouts, check his heart, put your hand on his heart. So the doctor did. Well, Benavides at this point has just been through a lot. He's just, he, he's just about out for the count, but he realizes this is survival now because he's in his body bag, they're starting to zip it up. So when the doctor puts his hand on his chest, he felt it and he knows this is his only chance to get out of this without that body bag being zipped up. So he spat the doctor's face to let him know he is still alive. So he survives these wounds. 1981, Ronald Reagan awarded him the, the Medal of Honor. Now, I don't know about many other people, but this is probably one of the most bravest person I have ever read a story about. Roy Benavidez did more. Now, he would not take credit when he gave his speech. He, he thanked mothers for that were raising their kids right. He thanked people in America that loved their country. He made it clear he would die for his country. He would go back to any other combat situation in a heartbeat because he loved this country and he wanted to make sure that the people of the United States were kept safe. So in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this story. Please like and share the video. Also subscribe to the channel, ring the bell if you want to get notifications of future videos. And in the meantime, don't forget our ch other channel, Just A Bit Outside. It's got a lot of great stories that I can't post on here. And I hope you had, guys have a great day, fair winds, and following seas.
fouls to bid outside.